part seven, setting the gate open and closed limits. Before we set up the gate limits, we need to first check that all our wiring has been done correctly. Ensure the electricity is switched off and the battery is disconnected. The main supply terminates onto this removable green connector on the side of the charger. It is recommended that the cabling and termination of the main supply is done by a qualified electrician. However, if you plan to do this yourself, ensure that it is done correctly. The live wire connects to the top terminal, the neutral wire to the middle and the earth to the bottom. Ensure that each wire is securely tightened into the connected terminals and that no part of the wires can short against each other. The spade connector of the charger earth lead connects onto the controller here. The charger output plugs onto the controller via this white connector. The Nova plug-in receiver connects directly onto these pins on the controller and sits in the convenient receiver housing. Feed the aerial through the gap of the lid and stretch out the wire as straight as possible. This helps give the unit better range. Bend the wire so that it points down towards the bottom of the gearbox. Check that a wire link is fitted between the infrared safety beam input marked IRB on the controller and the common input marked COM. Check for a similar link between the holiday lockout input marked LCK and the common. These links will be removed if you intend using either or both of these features later. The motor wires will already be terminated onto the controller, but it's necessary to check the connection of these to suit your installation and make sure the gate runs in the right direction during commissioning. The motor is wired for a gate that closes to the right. This is viewing the gate from inside the property. The blue wire will be wired on the outside terminal. If your gate closes to the left, swap these wires. Finally, the battery leads will also be connected to the controller from the factory. Install the battery and only connect the positive lead to it. Leave the negative lead disconnected. If you're satisfied your wiring is correct, you may now switch on the electricity supply to the charger and check that the green LED marked charger lights up. You can now move on to the setup procedure. Clear the gate of any obstructions and make sure that no children or pets are playing in the vicinity as the gate will operate during the setup procedure. To get into programming mode, remove all power from the controller. Disconnect the negative lead and unplug the charger connector. Fit the set link to the pins like this. Now reapply the power by first connecting the charger plug and then the negative lead to the battery. As you do this, the status LED will flash five times. When the LEDs set and L2 are on and L1 is off, you're in programming mode. The next stage is to disengage the manual override. To do this, turn the thumb wheel fully clockwise until the gate can be moved by hand. Now slide the gate approximately halfway open. Re-engage the drive by turning the thumb wheel anti-clockwise as much as possible, just short of not being able to close the manual override door. Slide the gate slightly until the drive locks with an audible click. To start the automatic setup routine, press the test button for one flash of LED L1 and then release. Then press and hold the test button until the status LED comes on. When it does, release the test button to begin the automatic setup. The gate starts to crawl open. If it disconnect the power from both the charger and battery, your motor wires are the wrong way round and must be swapped. If the motor wires are correct, the gate will proceed with its automatic routine consisting of five opening and closing cycles to pick up its limit switch origin and learn its open, closed and pedestrian positions. The automatic setup routine is shown in detail in the manual. During the last cycle, the gate reverses at full speed and stops in the pedestrian position. 
you can widen the pedestrian opening by shorting across the inputs marked PED and common on the terminal blocks with a short piece of wire. If you are happy with the gate setup, press and release the test button to save the settings. Your setup is complete. Get out of programming mode by removing the set link and store it over one of the two pins on the controller. The factory settings on the controller have been selected to suit most applications, so generally there will be no need to change the default settings. If you need to change any settings, like changing the sensitivity of the gate, refer to the section Setting Additional Features in the Manual.